Welcome to Open Book with Amanda, where today we're going to talk about 10 things I wish I knew before coming a nursing assistant. Today, let's open up that chapter of 10 things I wish I knew before becoming a nursing assistant. Number one, collaborate. Collaborate with another nursing assistant so you can find out the pros and cons of being a nursing assistant. Um, you can go to a hospital facility and ask, can you shadow one? Or you can um, also find ones that are nursing assistant and ask them, is it okay for you to sit down and interview them and ask them certain questions about the things that they need to look out for to become a nursing assistant? Number two, facility or private duty or both. Find a way to utilize being a nursing assistant. And what I mean by that is that you can work at a facility like a hospital setting or a nursing home, or you can do private duty, which I've come to know some do both. They'll work at the nursing home or at the hospital setting, and on the weekend or on the days off, they do private duty. Now, there are some benefits with both of them. Um, that's something that you would have to decide on and choose on when you get into the field, if you decide to get into the field. Um, but both of them are beneficial, but they both have pros and cons. Number three, learn how to negotiate your salary if you work at a hospital or at a facility and or if you're doing private duty. Private duty is more based off of you working for yourself and you also can work for an agency too that do private duty, but I think that you probably would make more money if you did it based from yourself. Because a lot I've seen some NAs, not myself, but other NAs that um, when they work in the hospital setting and say for instance, if one of the patients that they have their family or so forth want you to continue on taking care of them um, at a more private setting, then that's something you might could negotiate with them. Um, but um, it's, it is something to think about um, when you're negotiating your salary and how much you want to get paid being a nursing assistant. Um, also, with most hospitals, they want you to have experience, um, not all the time. But a majority of the time, they do kind of want you to have a little experience because of how fast paced and how many patients you tend to have when you work in a hospital. But at the same time, you does not necessarily mean that you have to have experience to go work at a hospital. Um, but they do take that into consideration. Most people start out at a nursing home, get more experience there, and then maybe transfer to a hospital or another facility. But Either way, learn how to negotiate how much you're worth and what you want to get paid. Number four, you got to be able to stomach the situations that you want to come upon being a nursing assistant. Now, in a nursing home, you won't have as many different situations as you would be in a hospital, but you still have different things that you still need to be aware of when you're in those facilities. Nursing homes, most of the time you're more in tune with giving baths, feeding, maybe um, taking them outside, taking them to do um, different um, fun activities, um, helping them to groom themselves, helping them to maybe do some things on their own. Whereas in a hospital, you will do some of those, some of those same things, but at a different way. What I mean by that is that you, in a hospital, you might have to feed patients and um, change them and bathe them but also you're gonna have to take them to different floors to get like x-rays and you may have to take them to go get um, ultrasounds done and um, MRI sometimes there's um, there's sleep um, what do they call it a sleep um, facility where they um, monitor them how their sleep patterns in to diagnose them with sleep sleep apnea or something like that I mean, you might have to transport them there to that now during the daytime on the hospital setting a lot of times the facility do um, have people that 
transport the patients themselves but night shift tend to be the ones that's going to have to do the transporting of the patients because night shift a lot of times they're not so accessible with the hand and the help that you need like during the day when the doctors are making their rounds and making their suggestions and stuff in a, or in the hospital but um there's other situations that you might need to learn how to stomach whereas they're going to be fresh wounds you're going to see you might see amputations you might see um open cavities you might see a whole lot of different things that you wouldn't normally see in a nursing home setting but at the same time be aware that you're going to see some things that you won't normally see on uh, outside of the hospital and you need to be able to stomach these things one tip i am going to give though if you are becoming a nursing assistant or you ain't never did this before that when you are going to work in a um hospital or any setting make sure you eat something have something on your stomach because when you come encounter of those smells the different types of smells that you're going to come in contact with it will make you sick so make sure you have something on your stomach you ain't got to be heavy but make sure you have something on your stomach and not just liquids you need something that's a little solid on your stomach to be able to stomach some of the smells that you're going to come upon and eventually you ain't gonna say you're going to get used to them but you're gonna be kind of immune to them once you've been around it for a while number five know that every nurse that you work with is not a team player there are going to be some that are wonderful to work with but there are going to be some that are not so wonderful to work with they won't lift a finger to help you they won't ask you if you need any help and then if you ask them for any help they act they act as if you're not even talking to them when it be their patients that need the help or assistance and that's where I'll come to the next one for number six on safety measures. When you have patients, you are um, each you and the, the patient have a nursing assistant and it have a uh, a nurse. And if they come to a situation where your safety is involved, your back, your extremities, in order for you to move and maneuver patients and everything, the nurse is supposed to help assist you doing that too. Uh, sometimes they might not be available and there's another nursing assistant to um, help you with then you ask them too and it's the same as it goes with a nurse might not be a team player some of the nursing assistants you work with might not be a team player neither so know that still your body is very important to keep safe at all times so if you're in dire stray and you need help please ask somebody to help you don't try to do it by yourself because you can risk being injured very severely and you don't want that which now comes to my next one which is seven know when you need to take a break know sometimes in a hospital setting and even in a nursing home you want to have a lot of patience and sometimes you don't know when you want to see a break and there have been times that i have worked and I didn't have a break for eight hours and that's not good it's not good to the body and you can end up burning out really quick and you don't want that but at the same time if that's what's happening might be time for a change um and don't be afraid to speak up speak up talk to your manager and supervisor if they're not doing nothing you go to a higher authority if they're not doing nothing there's somebody else that's above them and go to them because your safety is in um in play when um you're not taking breaks between the things that you have to do working as a nursing assistant nursing assistants are the backbones of working in a hospital setting or a nursing a nursing home with the nurses and the doctors they are the ones that do all the lifting do all the maneuvering do the helping with um bathroom um assistance and if you don't if you don't get the help that you need you you're going to fall short you are going to burn out and you ain't going to want to work there anymore uh, but that's what happens sometimes so learn to know when to take a break when you need it um next thing is number eight 
you have to have patience for the patient. You may have an elderly patient. You may have an adult patient that cannot move on their own. You may have a, a small child, teenager. You may even have an infant. You don't know what patient you might work with, but at the same time, you need patience with them because they're going through something. You don't know exactly how they feel. And in their world, sometimes it's the worst thing that they could ever go through. So you have to have a little understanding and be patient with them and help them throughout the time period and frame that you're working with them. And I guarantee what you do, um, things will work out okay. But if you're showing that you don't have any patience with them, it's, it's going to be some animosity. It's going to be some tension. And it's not going to be of good service. And as an NA, you're supposed to show professionalism. I don't care whatever happens. I don't care what is being said. You're supposed to be a professional. And you just have to be patient with them. Sometimes, no, they don't understand what's going on. You can try to explain it and they still don't understand it. But still try your best to talk to them and listen to them and what they're feeling at that time, too. Number nine, know that where you start at is not where you're going to end up at. And what do I mean by that is you may start out working at the hospital and you start out on the third floor, second floor, fourth floor, either floor. You start out there, you get trained for that area of the hospital. Because there are different areas. It may be an oncology, maybe a surgery, maybe a um, the, uh, adult care. Um, it, it, it's different departments. So what you, where you start at, you learn how to do everything on that floor or whatever. Um, it's going to come a point in time whereas on the floor, say you started out on the third floor, well, the second floor is short-handed, so you may be pulled to that floor to work that shift, um, so which means you're going to be learning something new. And still, some of the things that you already know is going to be implemented too. But know that you want to learn something new you're not going to always be um at your home base i like to call it uh when you're working at the hospital um nursing home same thing you may meet be um on one area of the nursing home where the patients are somewhat mobile they can kind of do for themselves but they still need assistance or you may be in another portion of it whereas all the patients can't do nothing for themselves and you have to do everything the clothing the bathing the feeding and then the turning their bodies every two hours so they don't get bed sores or you know and so forth so know that just because you started here it don't mean that you're always going to end up here you may even get pulled to the emergency room in a hospital um, you, you never know. Kind of go into working at um, either facility as um, whatever comes, be ready for it. Because sometimes you just don't know what's going to come. Um, but just know, hey, <laughs> you, you're going to be the jack of all trades in a sense sometimes if you work in a facility long enough. Number 10, weather conditions. Know that if there's a snowstorm, ice, if the road conditions are very bad, um, if your hurricane has come through, whatever, pack you some extra clothes, extra uniforms, some toiletries and so forth because there's a possibility you may get stuck at the hospital. It may be your whole shift that you work there and you got to stay at the hospital or you may work one shift and be off two days but because of the conditions you can't leave so you have to stay there still in the hospital and it might run back into your shift um so know that it, expectations of you being there they still expect you to be there because their patients need to be taken care of even through the storms through storms there's still emergency there's still people coming into the hospitals and at the nursing facility, they still need assistance. Even though the storms is there, they still need the help that they need to um, take care of the patient. So know the expectations of when weather um, changes and the conditions are dangerous for you to be out on the road and be able, um, traveling back and forth home to your job, then you might have to stay at that facility. 
Thank you for tuning in with me on some of the things that I wish I knew before coming a nursing assistant. Um, I hope that you um, got a lot out of this content and that it helps you along your journey of becoming a nursing assistant or being a nursing assistant or choosing to change your field. Um, either or know that there are going to be different obstacles that you're going to face with being um, becoming a nursing assistant. So with that note, until the next chapter, bye.